Hi guys, this is Shelly Fitzgerald with So Shelly Quilts. Welcome. This is the second video where I'm going to work in the auto digitized toolbox. So I'm going to quickly bring in a picture, the little puppy, and I'm going to just run through this process. You're going to see exactly what I'm doing in the first video and exactly how to do these things. I just want to crop this as a rectangle for you though because um, I already stitched it and videoed the stitch out and it was as a rectangle. So the cropping video we ended up with a different shape but this is what I want to use today. I have to remember to change the size. This came in at 42 inches so I need to go to 8 inches. That was locked. I'm going to say enter. And now I'm going to choose the zero on my com um, computer and look it didn't fill everything up. Do you see how those um, dots are bigger than the picture? That's because it's zooming to the entire photo not just the cropped part. So I zoomed in a little bit so that I could see it and now um, I'm going to go ahead and touch photo snap. So Photo Snap is an interesting tool. I think it's pretty fascinating and I want to show you all the changes and I did stitch it out and it turned out actually kind of cool. I inserted a picture here of the actual stitch out that's on fabric and I'll have a video coming next that shows you how the stitching was actually done. Um, so now what you see is the picture and then some lines on the top and where the picture is dark the lines are wider where the picture is light the wine lines are narrower and so that's how photo snap works it's just kind of a cool graphic now in order to really work with it I want to hide the actual photo I can't delete it because we're working with it but right here is show bitmaps. It's yellow, so I can see that bitmap photo. And I'm going to turn that off. So the photo is still there, but now all I see are the stitches, and that's good. So let's play with these stitches and see what we can do to improve or change to our taste uh, this photo on how it's going to stitch. So. I'm going to open the object properties. I'm going to do that by double clicking. Remember I could click up here or use a menu but I'm just going to left click twice. And there are my object properties. And I'm going to move the photo so that we can see it and the properties. I'm going to grab this text box by the header next to the name of the text box to move it around. So I want to get it to where we can see both. And the photo snap properties came up because that is selected. And with photo snap, you have resolution of how thick are the lines. Are they coarse, medium, or fine? The fill angle, the angle of the stitches. The background, whether it's light or dark background. You choose a dark background. Let's look at that and hit apply. You'll see that it... Um, looks like a negative like a negative photo image I don't care for that but sometimes that might be what you want let's go back to light and hit apply again the different resolutions are where you would change the resolution on the lines themselves so I'm gonna zoom way in so that we can see some of the lines and I'm going to go to course and say apply and we'll see that resolution changed and now I'm going to come down to fine and say apply and you'll see how much narrower those lines are and how different they became tighter more of them um, let's uh, zoom to the selected again and since the picture is not visible it actually zoomed to the stitch area this time so 
there would be the fine. I'm going to go back to course so that we could see the effects overall. I think you see the puppy better like that. Now you can play with the stitch angle. And so I'm going to type in 15. It was at zero and apply. And that will put those lines at a 15 degree. I'm going to type in 30, apply. And you'll see on your picture that you'll play and play and play until you come up with a result that you like on how does that look. I'm going to go up to uh, 60, just kind of working my way around. I did already stitch this. I'm pretty sure I ended up at 70 when I actually stitched it, so I'll end up there. You end up wherever you want and stitch it out and see. There are quite a few stitches. Um, the one I stitched out had 81,000 stitches, so it must have been a larger size than this. This one has 43. And you know what, guys? I did not save the actual file. I just put the EXP file on my stick and stitched it, and I messed up and cannot find that I saved the actual art file to go back and get those exact settings for you. But it really doesn't matter because you're going to come up with what you like anyway. But don't forget to save your files. So another change that we can make to the photo snap stitches, I'm going to um, click on my object properties again, get this to where we can see it. And when you're on the photo snap tab, that is affecting how they're laid over the photo, but we come over to the fill stitch tab. And when photo snap is selected on the fill stitch, it'll say, fill type photo satin and you can change those stitch settings and those are the settings of the actual lines let me zoom way in so that we can see this okay so we can see the skew angle is at zero those stitches are laying flat and the stitch spacing 0.016 so it's really tight i'm going to come in even closer and so now watch, if I put that skew angle to 45, it's changing the stitches in the row, not where the overall rows are laid. So this is actually working with the stitches inside of the angle so of the thing. So you can see now those are at a 45. Let's put it up to 60 and see if we see those move again. There we go. See how much that moved? Whereas it was originally at zero. And then the stitch space, oh, let's zoom out. Let me, sh let me show you, uh, two selected. Let me show you that real quick. What changes that made by moving that stitch angle. So since you see what we're doing, I'm gonna zoom out and change it again uh, let's go back to zero. So that's what it looked like at 60. I'm going to go back to zero, apply. And so that does have some effect on what your resulting quality of the picture you're getting. You know, it's all going to depend on the photo you've pulled up to use. So these are the things to try. And then here are the stitch spacing. So let me zoom in again. This is at 0 0.06. And I'm going to go to, well, let's go to point. O three and apply. Uh, that was way too big, 72. I don't know how that happened. We're gonna go to point O three. I think I hit comma O three. There we go, point O three. So see how much uh, farther apart the actual zigzag is. So you have a lot of control on um, how these stitches work and what effect you're going to get from the stitches. So I'm going to push undo, go back to that 72 per inch, forget that, we'll click undo again, we'll be back to um, the thicker 
0.016, but I wanted you to see that the fill stitch photo satin settings are an important tool also in addition to the resolution uh, fill angle and whether the background was light or dark. So just as a reminder, or for those of you that are new, to save this, you go to File, Save As, and your only option is to save it as an all-in-one, an art file. Well, you could save it as a, a EMB Wilcom, but this is where you save everything. This is not stitchable, but this is what I forgot to do. And had I remembered to do this, then when I came back, I would have the ability to um, get all of the details of exactly how that stitch was created. So you would save, I had already done this, so I'm gonna cancel because I did it since, and now that's saved. But to stitch it, two things, either file, export machine file, which will put it on my computer in a stitchable format as a EXP, or if I wanted to stitch it on any other style of sewing machine I would this is where I would put it as a JEF a DST and then save that to my computer my computer automatically went to my machine files yours you could then put it anywhere you wanted or if I just want to go straight to the sewing machine I hit the little sewing machine to get the dialog box so you would send directly to the EXP um, on a USB stick. That's what I did before uh, without bothering to save it um, in file save as an art file. So that's why I want to make sure. So I just sent it to my stick, which if you didn't need the original, that's awesome. Uh, if I had a deco machine, I would choose this. If I had a serial port connection, I would choose that. If I had an, a 200 or a 200 or a 730, I could choose this. And if my machine was actually connected, these would be gray. And I could just stitch without saving it at all from here, or I could save it onto the sewing machine. But I don't have a sewing machine connected. So you would choose this. It would bring up the USB stick location, save it, and then you would say OK and go. So um, that's that. Next, we're going to. Um, I'll show you an actual stitch out. I'll put that video up. And then we're going to play in the auto digitize toolbox with, um, uh, let me select that so they become active, uh, color photo stitch. Color photo stitch is awesome cool. So we'll play with that next. This is Shelly Fitzgerald with So Shelly Quilts. Thank you for joining me. Bye for now.